Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. I'm in a little bit of a different uh, scene <clears throat> than I normally am. As you can see, I'm I'm uh, walking around outside, hanging outside my backyard here, which is <coughs> excuse me, which is uh, like my sanctuary back here. I really really like it back here. Maybe I'll do more Wake Up Legendaries from back here. Um, anyways, today we have an amazing guest, as we normally do, and uh, I am so excited to talk about marketing and life and everything with her. Please bring our guest out. Hi, Molly. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, I am excited to, to, to talk to you and uh, learn about um, how you decided to get started with us. Uh Talk to us about where you're calling in from and a little bit about yourself before we jump into things. Yeah, so I'm from Western Canada. I'm not, not too far from Vancouver. Um, yeah, and so I, uh, I'm i originally from like central Canada, but I've been out here about 10 years and I wake up and look out my window and look at mountains. So I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm not going back. Nice. I love that. So um, what what moved you what attracted you to legendary marketer uh what were you looking for when you found us yeah so um i like my background is in retail management and um that means shift work it means working holidays weekends late evenings um and when i had my first baby i had to go back to work and it was only for like six months because i was pregnant with my second one when i went back to work um but it was horrible having kids and missing bedtimes and missing weekends. And my husband and I had it like planned out so that like I had Thursday, Friday off and he had our child on Saturday, Sunday. So like we never saw each other. Um, and I just knew like second time around, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to be home with my kids. And in Canada, you get, you get like the choice of a nine, 12 or an 18 month maternity leave. So we're very lucky. Um, but it is capped out at a certain income. So you don't necessarily make that much while you're on maternity leave. But I was fortunate to take an 18 month leave with my youngest. Um, so it gave me a lot of time to figure out like what I wanted to do instead of going back to work. Um, and mm. kind of like most people's journey is that they saw someone on TikTok sharing how they're making five figures a month. And I was curious. So I looked into it and here I am. <laughs> Here you are. Wonderful. Um, so do you like what you've experienced so far and what has been the big aha moments for you? Yeah. So I was, I was definitely very skeptical in the beginning, but sure. I was like, it's a $7 training. Um, I'm just going to go into it with a positive mindset. And like, if I learn something, it was worth $7. So that was sort of my like mindset of like, if you're still going to be skeptical, that's okay, but see what I can learn from it. Yeah. Um, and I definitely, I definitely took my time with it, but I think it was like, for me, the biggest aha moment was just like seeing, like seeing that it's possible, but seeing that you don't have to work eight hours a day, five days a week to like seeing how that comes into play. Like you, you don't have to work nine to five and work 40 hours a week and you can still be successful whatever successful is to you so that was my biggest like okay this is great <laughs> had you never had any experience with or any exposure i guess would be the better word to making money that wasn't trading time for dollars no i no i was i had this looked is. into like I, I before like my maternity leave ended i had looked into doing um like ugc and i was kind of curious about it wasn't for me but um and then not that I made money with it, but yeah, I've always, I have always spent my time to make my money. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's pretty common here in the United States is kind of be a good little boy, be a good little girl, get good grades, graduate mm -hmm. high school, go to college. And it's pretty much the cookie cutter path for every person. Is that also the way it was growing up in Canada? Oh, it's a hundred percent the same. And it's funny because I think you like 
even at 18, you still feel the pressure to go to college or university, even though you have no clue what you want to do. So like you go into general arts and science and that's what you graduate with and you end up in retail management because you're like, I don't know what I want to do at 18, but it's, it's very much the same. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and put Molly's uh, link up and share so people can follow and connect with her as well. Awesome. Molly, the affiliate mama. Awesome. (laughs) Um, Are you blown away by how many uh, people that are also you're finding that are also in the same place that you are looking for the same things and are now even in this community moving in the same direction are you kind of surprised by how many people are are on this path what what are you surprised about if if Um, talk to us about what you know finding this community has been like and you know i i remember for me it was like kind of i was like i was like um is this like the underworld you know i was like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you, you know, but I, because these people all looked like everybody at coffee shops, schools, colleges, retail shops, but they were, they didn't want to trade time for money. They were talking about freedom and marketing and, and leverage yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So what's it been like to be around a bunch of people who are talking and thinking like we do? I I think once you like, you know, once you take the trading and you kind of start getting immersed in that world, it actually isn't so surprising because what, like, I'm an average everyday mom. Why wouldn't people kind of, why wouldn't we all kind of think the same? Um, So I wasn't like super shocked that people want something different. Um, I was just shocked that there is something different. And I think that's where people get stuck is like, oh, I don't have to do this. There are other options um, and I can have time freedom and financial freedom. Um, I think like the, maybe the biggest thing I would say that surprised me is how like support of the community is like it's not a saturated market where everyone's like fighting for their chance to make money it's like everyone is so supportive and like the like legendary marketer affiliates group like ever like if you have a question everybody has an answer for you and like just to have that support and know that like i feel like we're working together like we're a team yeah yeah. And it is a it is a very nice not a uh, judgment free zone here at Legendary. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. there's not and obviously that um you know, that starts with me. I mean, if I was up here judging and talking down and being <laughs> condescending and everything, that would kind of permeate throughout the community. I've been in communities like that where people did do that or leaders of a, uh, you know, gurus this and that. Um, But I found that um, obviously that doesn't motivate me. I found that that doesn't make me feel safe and comfortable to be around and fail. And and I want to be around people that I can make mistakes. I can fail. I can wake up and, you know, be a little under the weather and just (laughs) be on my, you know, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent right now. My, you know, I've been, I've had a rough couple of weeks with my father being in the hospital and everything else. And people are just supportive of me as well. You know, don't have me up on like some ridiculous pedestal and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal either. Um, how important do you think it is, uh, when people are thinking about, uh, who they want to learn with, who they want to learn from what, and it's not even about if you want to just learn affiliate marketing, it's anything, to really be extra careful about the communities that you do get involved with because um, everybody is, you know, I've, I've learned here and I'm sure you are now too out on the internet that everybody doesn't have your best intentions in mind. How are you, you know, what advice do you have for brand new people to, to, to kind of stick close to safe people, to people who have your best interest in mind and how are you beginning to pick out the, you know, or, or, or what words of a warning could you give to people that, you know, you honestly really can't trust everybody out there on the internet. I mean, do you, do you agree with that? What would you add to it? Uh, what would I add to it? I think like it's important to have boundaries in this business. Um, I, I know that probably sounds a little interesting, but like you will never, we see love like, boundaries. That's yeah, not right? in, We love boundaries. So in all, please in all facets of life. Um, yeah. you'll never see my kids, like you'll never see my kids faces. Like that is my boundary. Um, and my goal is to keep them safe. Um, and so that's definitely one. Um, and I think when you're connecting with people that are interested, um, 
like I think there does need to be boundaries of like you know what we're here what I'm here to teach you and tell you about and um yeah I think my biggest word for that would be boundaries <laughs> yeah so um it's easy to it's easy to get um it's easy to get distracted with with uh, various different conversations um, out on the internet, and I like that. Stay focused on this is what I'm here to talk about, and that also I think keeps us on on topic when we're creating content too. You know, totally. it's like I used to at the beginning of my affiliate marketing career really weave in so many aspects of my life, and I I did too much. You know what I mean? Like I didn't need to do all that. I, I I could have kept it more what's in it for them instead of trying to, you know, again, self-disclose, talk about my story, tie my story into every single piece of content. How are you finding that you're most comfortable creating content and what type of content do you most like to create? Um, I, I feel like right now I kind of have a mix of like, side hustles, ways to make money online. Um, I love, I'm trying to do like, you know, the nurture, the sell, um, the growth. I'm trying to have a kit, find a cadence with that and a balance with it. Um, and I like to throw in just like me talking to the camera about things, uh, you know, sitting in my car or sitting on my couch and I have a video about like, um, why I think, um, affiliate marketing is great for people with ADHD because I was diagnosed with it in my thirties. Ooh. Um, and so I, me too. let's I, talk about that. Yeah, I, honestly, like, I, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I feel like if legendary marketer did a poll of like everyone who had ADHD, you'd see that there was like a high <laughs> amount because I think it's a great business model for people with ADHD. So, <laughs> well, here I am. So yeah. I mean, uh, squirrel, hold on a second. <laughs> what? No, I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. I mean, flies i'll be at the dinner table and see a mosquito and next thing i'm chasing it around the house i mean it's it's a problem so what are the tools though what is the awareness that you have how have you managed your adhd in in a business like this where you really can chase a million different rabbles rabbits down a million different holes you know um true honest answer i'm still trying to find that balance, but I do find it's like, I have to sit down and make myself focus and like write the list of like kind of what I want to achieve this week and like what kind of content I wanna put out. And it's like, if I'm doing three bits of content, I wanna write out like what I want each to be. And then that way, like if I can make a bunch of content in one go, great. But if I'm sort of on the fly with kids, I can make those videos as I'm going throughout the day. Um, but I do try to like have, a written out plan of like what I'm going to do for those seven days to keep myself on track. Yeah. And then I see something shiny and I'm like, Oh, that, that video would be really good. Or this one, you know? <laughs> well, I, I, it's the big moves that get people in trouble. It's like the closing down what I'm doing and chasing like a whole nother business model. Or, you know, sometimes we're scrolling on social media and it's like, Oh, register for this webinar. And then the next thing we're signing up for another course. <laughs> And we become overwhelmed and start to feel kind of almost, you know, start to get down on ourselves, beat ourselves up, shame, embarrassment, whatever it is, because some of us, me, me, mostly I'm speaking about myself, didn't realize that I had some of these shortcomings that, it, that I had, that this was actually ADHD, that this was actually anxiety. I just thought everybody felt this way. And, but, but they don't, we all have our own individual kind of makeup and um, I've used all kinds of little things. The most traditional things for my ADHD have been probably the most useful. It's not getting too obsessed with apps in like digital technology to try to keep me in line, but more kind of physical old fashioned things like post-it notes, like physical lists. Um, uh, looking at my number one priority for that day, not even like making a list, like just making my number one priority for that day. What's the biggest thing, the most important thing that I need to accomplish that day and then doing that. And a lot of times that will then, there'll be little branches of that big main tree 
that that I can kind of work on, but ultimately I'm getting that one big thing done each day. And that's been incredibly helpful because when, you know, I used to pull up to the desk with like a list, it was hard to like pick what I wanted to work on. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Until I started being like, okay, there's, there's things on this list that are like 80, 20, (laughs) 80% of this stuff is going to have 20% of the impact. 20% of the things are going to have 80% of the impact. And so then I started just really focusing on that one big thing per day. And that may be useful to some of you. Others, it may not. We have to find what works for us. How have you used that? You know, it's kind of like tr- it's kind of like creating content. We see a video out there. It's like, yeah, I want to remake that video. That looks like a video that's doing well. We have to put our own spin on it. The same way that we have to put our own spin on how we show up to work and our productivity tools. One app that keeps you organized may make me crazy, right? How do you keep from comp- getting into comparisonitis with others and, and feeling like you need to keep up with the internet, Joneses? Um, it, it is hard, and I think everyone can attest that like they definitely get stuck in it. I think uh, one thing for me is like to stop being a consumer of like TikTok and Instagram or whatever, and to like use it to put my content out, see you know, look at some reels, comment. Um, build your engagement. But um, yeah, it's like, for me, it's like, stop when you have spare time, stop scrolling TikTok all the time because you do start comparing yourself. And I think the other thing too, is like looking at like, I have still like, no, I'm not, I'm not Caroline and Becca and like they've had amazing results and like they work so hard, but I've also had great results for me and I've achieved what I came to do. And when I start achieving more and it's not an if it's when, It will be like, that will be amazing, but I can't compare my journey to theirs because we've done it in completely different ways and I have achieved my goals so far. So I'm not, not succeeding. So I have to like, you know, take a step back and remind myself when you get stuck scrolling and you're like, oh, but they're doing this and they're doing this and remind myself, like you've done what you came here to do. Mm. Yeah. The scrolling, the, the kind of mindlessly scrolling, with the reasoning of I'm doing research or whatever like that um, can be can be tricky. You know, our own minds can play tricks on us and we can also lose a lot of time scrolling. You know, it's like so it's like um, it, so it's like our, our this business that we were doing now all of a sudden, you know, it's like, OK, where are my boundaries with myself? You know, where are my boundaries with <laughs> yeah. myself? Uh, that's 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 one of the the first places that I started to learn where I needed to set boundaries. Um, not so much with other people. Let me learn how to set boundaries with myself first. It's hard though. It's really hard because the phone is right there, and it's so- like a go-to thing. And it's like so. It's I I just want to tell everybody out there from me personally that. I have not found the answer to be totally, you know, disciplined with my, you know, what I tend to do me personally, when we come home, I tend to, um, grab my phone and put on some music in the house via Sono. So I have other things that are stimulating my mind. Obviously I have young children. So when I walk into the house, I, they chaos. <laughs> it don't matter what I'm doing, what I've had going on during that day. It's they are glued to me, and I love it. So that's something that helps me. The music, setting up Sonos, and having music going on. So there's something else that's stimulating my mind. Uh, obviously, engaging with other people. Do you have anything that you use with the, the, to help you to have boundaries around your devices and, and so forth, maybe when you're with your family or whatever? Yeah, I'm I'm still kind of learning what that, because like I'm home with my kids all day, like yes. it is easy to be like, I need a quick break. I'll just spend 10 minutes on TikTok. Um, so I am still <laughs> working on that because- And you probably deserve it. I mean, for God's sake. <laughs> I deserve some sort of break for sure. But I'm like, is TikTok the healthy one? <laughs> But, um, yeah. but when like my husband gets home, we do try to be very like your home. It's time for both of us to be with the kids. We only have so many hours till bedtime um, because he only like he doesn't get all day with them. And 
I don't yeah. get all day with him either. So I do try to focus. Um, my husband also has ADHD. It's a great household here. But um, his trick is he puts on um, like the ambient space, like the music in the space on YouTube, but it plays on the TV and throughout the house. And um, that's how he kind of clicks in and can focus on the kids. Um, yeah. So that's his little trick. But um, mine he is and I just, are alike. Like yeah, that's <laughs> really a, that's a real thing, people. I mean, I try it. Like if you're looking to break away from like get a little break from your phone or start to set more boundaries, personal boundaries with your devices so you can have more separation, so your mind can have more relaxation, so you can really just step away from your business. Unfortunately, our business for in many respects happens on our phone, on our devices. So it's it's we can work from home. It's totally doable. But what I found is the separation has to happen somewhere. So it has to happen with my devices and kind of giving me a break. And I'm telling you, putting on music, I just have this thing with having music in the background and Sonos getting so now I've done that too. I, I, I will do that too hook it up on the TV, play ambient music or whatever on YouTube, you know, but having that background music in the background. And I'm going to tell you one thing, folks, it also is really helpful when you're working. If you have like study lo-fi beats or chill beats or relaxation, piano, jazz, there's all these different non-verbal, it's just acoustic or the music, you know, behind the words, no words. It's so helpful to not only help you to focus if you need to do that with work, but also maybe you work better quietly to then transition to relaxing, to put on some music and just engage one of your senses and, and kind of take your mind off it. How else, Molly, do you, what, what else do you do to, um, not be totally consumed with this. You know, when I first got started, I was totally consumed with it. I was upset. <laughs> I was excited. Right. So how much do you talk about it with your husband and friends and family or how much have you sort of kept it to yourself? Um, yeah. So, I mean, you're right. Like it is, especially when you're starting, it is very exciting. And I feel like being a stay at home mom, it's even like a little more exciting. Cause you're like, I feel I have a purpose and like, it's, taking care of kids is a purpose. My kids are amazing, but I have a purpose that like, isn't just taking care of my kids. And so like, it is, it is very exciting and it is very consuming. Um, I think for me, it's just like, I'm, I, I really don't want to work when my kids are awake. They're three and two. So they are very, like, they're very demanding. They need so many things. So like, I have a two year old. I yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, it's a fun phase, but yeah, like it requires so much time and energy. So I wake up before my kids in work when my kids have naps and quiet time, which I am very blessed. My three-year-old has quiet time. So like I get time to work then. And if I didn't get that done, then maybe like when they go to bed, I'll do a bit of work. But really I try to focus on working when my kids are sleeping so that like I'm not sitting there on my phone and I'm not taking time away from them. And I really can't anyways. It, it would be a very like half effort. <laughs> it, I get it. I get it. So how did you approach uh, your husband? What 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 did that look like? And and how has that gone? How have you solicited his support? How how you <laughs> yeah. know what's coming up for you? So that's it. A great um yeah. So throughout the years I've always come to him and been like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Like I've changed my career path. Uh, he could probably tell you it's been a lot of times. So um, and I've, I've spent some money on some courses in trading my time, um, or not trading my time, but, uh, changing my career path. Um, and it, it was all for hourly salary jobs. Um, and so when I started this, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to create a business plan and I'm going to come to him cause I want him to see that I'm serious and I'm not just like today, I'm going to try this. So he was like for weeks, like, what are you doing? Why are you, why, why are you always upstairs working on these things? Like, why can't I see? And I'm like, when the time's right, when the time's right. So like I sat down and I gave him a business meeting and I, I explained to him like what I'm going to be doing and that I'm going for it. And I was like, give me three months. And like, if I haven't been successful in three months, I'll give it up. But 
yeah, I'm still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. You can't, it was almost like you were wrapping his Christmas, but you can't totally. come in this room. He was like, what is this elusive thing that you're doing? I'm like, just, just wait, just wait. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how did you, so that that work like that approach like how, was he receptive to that because i think a, a lot of people are hesitant you know to been more as well like, hey uh, like was he receptive or and was there any specific besides the hey give me three months that you felt really helped him to see that this was important to you um i think my first answer was like it's not only fans okay <laughs> But um, he, uh, <laughs> I, I think he was, I mean, he knew I was like working on something and I was like, I'm like, yeah, sorry, I think I lost track of the question, but um, he, it's just like helping him understand like, this is, this is how I want to contribute. And like, I'm working on something and like, I know it seems like, what is she doing up there? But I just want to send it to you when I'm ready because like, I, I acknowledge the elephant in the room of like, listen, I'm the dreamer and like, I've come to you with a lot of ideas and I've asked a lot of money in the past for this. So it was kind of just acknowledging that like, this is a pattern, but this is why this is going to be different. And like, that's key. That's super key. Uh, you didn't lose track of the question. You, you answered it just <laughs> as, as it needed to be answered. And that is that, you know, you acknowledged you, you acknowledged you, your patterns, you, you let, you said, here's what I'm sure that you see. Here's how I'm sure you've ex experienced me. And that is so validating to a partner, right? When you're asking for, not asking for money, but when you're saying, hey, I'm going to spend some of our money and I'm going to take some of my time, which is our time, and I'm going to put it over there. Let me acknowledge the fact that I know I've done this before. I know I'm a dreamer. You know, I know that I've, I've asked for, you know, or done or chased dreams before, and some of them haven't worked out. And I, you know, that is, regardless of what you say next, that is so helpful in a relationship when you're starting something new to really let the partner feel safe, that you understand you that you know you, that you know your limitations, or you know maybe how even they might be feeling about this new venture that you're doing, which is maybe some anxiety and maybe kind of like, so, oh no, here we go again, I lost control. Like, oh, partners, it's not easy. It's not <laughs> easy. That, that's what I found. It's not easy. It takes a special person. Right. And um, one other thing that I should be doing was instead of at the inning, I just wanted my wife's love and support, you know, and, you know, sometime later I switched gears and instead of saying, can you support me? I need you to support me more. Why aren't you supporting me? I would go to her and say, I know I'm a l not as present lately, or I know that I'm have been wrapped up in this or I'm traveling or i just went to an event or i'm going to go to an event in a week or whatever it is how can i make you feel loved and supported just it just changes the whole dynamic of the relationship from only me or it feeling like i'm it's only me that's taking taking time away from the family taking money away from the family chasing a dream to now yes i am taking but i want to acknowledge that i'm taking I want to acknowledge that I'm chasing. I want to acknowledge that I'm that I'm I'm dreaming, and I also want to ask you how can I make you feel loved and supported as I as I take us on this right and change the game for me. Um, so where are you going now, Molly? What what's next? What's the next thing that you're working on? What you've overcome the fear of getting on camera, right? Have you have you also gone live? What okay? So, are you dialing that in right now? Kind of, if you could describe the phase that you're in right now, how would you describe it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm still kind of in my growth phase, but I think like now that I've 
been doing it and I've been working on my content and like, you know, I've built my funnel and, you know, I've had all that stuff done. I think it's just like fine tuning and continuing to kind of nurture. Um, you know, I, I'm still focused on like the, this niche, um, and promoting what I'm promoting right now, but, um, I want to keep, keep building on that. And then as my time opens up, as my kids get older, I plan to like it bring on more things, but right now I'm sort of just looking at growing what I've got going on. Um, because I do have young ones at home and, um, I, I love what I'm doing. So it's yeah. just kind of, yeah, fine tuning and growing. Yeah. And I, I, I like that. Um, you know, there's, it's really a, it's, it's really amazing how big you can build a, just an affiliate business, you know, promoting other people's products. You know, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, for my entire life, I thought that if I was going to ever get rich and own a business, I needed to invent a product. Did you ever feel like that? hundred percent. Like I needed to be at, an like, inventor. I mean, you look at all these baby products that like make so much money and you're like, why didn't I think of that? Right? Like, it's always about like, I should have created something and like, yeah, it's, it, I think that's why people struggle with this like business model is that like, you don't have to create something like you just promote something. So. Yeah. And we immediately turn to, well, oh, but it's so like hard to create content when we could totally switch that mindset and say, well, at least I don't have to create a product. Right. 100%. There's always a glass half empty and a glass half full way to look at things. What are, what is, how would you explain your journey through getting started here as an entrepreneur in terms of your mindset? Um, honestly, like you, you just have to like, stop thinking that you can't do it. Stop thinking that like, like, I mean, it's like we talked about before, like with comparing and stuff, like you have to go into it with the mindset of like, I will be successful. I will like, I will achieve my goals and you need to stop like comparing yourself to everyone else because yeah, you'll go crazy and you'll, you'll always look at someone else's results and think that like, you're not doing enough and you really have to like dial back and look at like, what, what are my specific goals? Are they, are they too big? Do I need to like bring them down? And like, do I need to achieve my goals in like smaller bite-sized pieces to like, you know, get that going. But it's, it really is, your mindset. And I think when you're in a, like, you, I mean, you see people comment all the time, this is a scam and everyone has their negative opinions. And yeah, if you're stuck in that mindset, you won't achieve anything. So when you open your mind and you have that positive, like mentality of I'm going to put this content out and I'm going to be successful, it will come. Yeah, it, it is. It is quite a, it is quite a, shocking thing or or i guess um it was sh it's shocking and empowering but when you go through learn the information see all of the different ways that money is being made online all of the different various ways not just affiliate marketing yeah, this I, I mean this is the tip of the iceberg this is the <laughs> easiest one of the easiest simplest ways to get into making money online is just selling other people's products and simultaneously through doing that you can create multiple streams of income there's people inside of our community that have as we teach multiple follow-up products or they're promoting multiple products um you, you know now the platforms facebook uh instagram youtube's always done this is paying us to put our content onto the platform so if you have a video that goes viral um, and, and gets a couple of million views that may end up being worth 10 or $20,000 to you. And that's exactly how it works over on YouTube and how it's worked for a long time. Um, do you feel more, do you feel more empowered now that you can see those, those various ways and it's not such a mystery anymore. And, 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 and now when you see those people who call scam, you realize that it has nothing to do with you. It really is truly their mindset and their lack of information and exposure to this information. Yeah. I think just like even going through like the 15 day training and then obviously applying everything and up to now, like 
as it all unfolds and like you learn more and you absorb more, um, yeah, like you can really see, like you do see that shift because like, I feel far more confident today than I felt when I started. Um, and that's like always my advice to everyone, everyone that has questions about it is that like, just take the course and like, just finish it. And like, there'll be a few days when you're like, what did I get myself into? And you're overwhelmed, of course, like, it's impossible not to be overwhelmed with something totally new, but just like continue, go through it. And then like, when you're done the course, work on your funnel, start putting content out. And like, it just, it starts to come and maybe like everyone's journey is different. So maybe it takes you a month to figure it out. Maybe it takes you a day. Like, it's just that you need to like continue and go get through the process because like, that's where it all starts to come together. And it's not necessarily in the training, but the training is so pivotal to learning the rest. But once I've been able to apply it, I'm like, oh, okay. Like it starts to come so much better, like faster. I love that advice. If you're feeling frustrated and you're feeling overwhelmed, keep taking action because it'll make sense as you put it into practice. It may not make sense in the videos. And, and then you can think about somebody who has no exposure to this and um, they're calling scam out there on the internet. For me, you almost can have a little bit more compassion for those people, right? To be thinking about how miserable do you have to be to be out on the internet trying to pee on somebody else's parade who's simply just trying to better themselves, make some money, share some value. And, and, and we take it, we start taking it less personally, at least, at least I have over the years. It still stings when you see it, it's never, it never feels good when people say mean things to you amount of training you can take that's going to say, oh yeah, it feels so good when somebody calls me a scammer. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you realize that these people are in a, in a tough spot. You know, you got to be in a really tough spot. You got to be in a crappy place in life to be hanging around the internet, commenting on people's random TikTok videos. Right. Um, so uh, I love that. And if you're going through the train, it's not making sense. Keep going through it and then yes. apply it. If it doesn't make sense in a video, it'll likely make sense in real life um, because you'll have it right there in front of you and you'll be working through it. So often we start the training, we get overwhelmed, we don't even continue because for, for whatever reason, we feel like it's just going to be too much. When the truth is, each one of us has uh, the ability, the skill level to be able to do this. Each one of us. Now, each one of us may not have the confidence, right? But each one of us has the ability, right, to do this. Um, and so any, any tips around confidence and how have you seen your confidence grow over what are you not afraid to do now that you might have been afraid to do it during the time when you were putting out your first video. Just talk to us a little bit about fear levels and confidence levels. Yeah. Um, I, like I would say when I first like was getting right, like I put off for a month, like to start making videos. Cause I was just like, I'm not ready. I can't do it. I, I, I'm, it's, I'm not confident enough. And then I finally just did it. And I think um, to go back for a second is with the training and everything is everybody has a different style of learning. And so like, maybe some people watch the video and they absorb it. It's great. Some people have to apply it. And so like, for mm -hmm. me, it was, yeah, definitely putting it into application was where I start to, to see, but yeah, I did, uh, I did postpone like my launch date for myself of like, yeah. putting videos out. Cause I was just like, I'm just a mom. Like people don't want to see me talking. Like it's, you know, what if people, what if my friends see it, whatever. Um, and honestly, like, it's just, just keep doing it. You just keep putting video. Maybe you do some trends that make you laugh and they totally flop. And maybe like I made a video when I, I had TikTok originally, I made a video about like the human microbes, like getting paid $180,000 a year to poop. And I was like, Oh my God, what have I done? But like, it got like 400 and I think it, by the time it, got to the top it was like 675,000 views um and it's like just try different things try and see what content um feels right to you what content works what your audience likes um but just do it yeah what what 
what question haven't I asked you before we wrap up that 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 um that maybe would bring out something useful or valuable, uh, but I haven't asked it. What else could you share with people about your journey and your experience before we wrap up that that would be helpful and that you know was helpful for you to hear or for you to know or would have been helpful for you to hear, <laughs> you know, um, if you could, th- and maybe you did hear it, uh, but what would be helpful, do you think, to, for somebody to hear today that you haven't said, or even something that you want to reiterate uh, before we wrap up that maybe I haven't asked the question to spur the answer? Um, yeah, like, I think my thing is just, like, I, I was just, I was, I am, just like an average, everyday stay-at-home mom, and like, I think a lot of moms can relate to like how expensive daycare is. And um, I just want to be home with my kids. And so, yeah, like if the algorithm is bringing you these videos, it's probably because you're looking for them. And so, you know, take the time and like listen to what these videos coming up onto your For You page are saying and like do some research. And uh, like that, that was how I found out about it was like, these moms that were making money and I didn't want to pay, it was going to cost me three grand to put my kids in daycare, which doesn't leave a lot left over. So, um, I just, yeah, like if the algorithm is finding you, like seize the opportunity, do your research, look into it and like try something new and don't, don't be afraid. Like it making money online is so people are just, they're so off put by it. We are so, like you said earlier in the beginning, like we're so conditioned to, work a nine to five and life just doesn't have to be that way. And I don't think people are always accepting of that yet. And so like, just embrace something totally different and give it a try. I love that. I love that. Molly, it's been, it's been a pleasure. I know that you're busy. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you get back to your, your wonderful life with your, uh, with your children and, um, and, and of course your husband and, um, and your business right? And yep. this new Thank kind of venture that you have. Oh my gosh. It's been, it's yeah. been great. It's been a pleasure. Um, and uh, please come back and see me in the near future and, and keep us posted on your journey. Will you? I will. Absolutely. All right, cool. All right, my friends, thank you so much for being here. Um, it is an honor every single day to interview um, a student, a client, a friend from this community, not a guru. You know, not a not not somebody who's uh, been successful for thirty years, or or you know, somebody who's speaking on stages. Off, you know, we're not looking to book the 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 guru guest list here. We're looking to talk to people who are going through our training, who are implementing it, uh, and who are inside of our community. And so, um, it's just a different vibe here. Uh, and as somebody asked yesterday. You know, is there anything except, you know, uh, stay at home moms in this community Um, or nurses, I think, was the other one that she said. There absolutely is. We've done nearly 700 of these interviews. So you can go back through and you can listen to old episodes uh, that still have absolutely fresh and relevant content. Because as you can see on these interviews, we talk about real stuff, not fake stuff real stuff, the stuff that you actually need to hear to develop your mindset, to develop your confidence, and to continue moving forward with this, right? Not overwhelm, not new strategies every single day, not a new idea every single day. No, a push to keep doing what you're doing until it gets results. That's how success is created. And that's why we go live every morning. So if this is not a part of your routine, please plug it into your calendar and be here live with us every morning uh, and, and, and strive to potentially be, be a guest on the show. I would love to talk to every single one of you. I have nothing but days out into the future to book people into the show. Now, we're booked quite quite a bit in advance, but you get the point. So, um, my friends, no matter what you're feeling today, know that you're not alone. Somebody in this community has felt it. Somebody in this community has overcome it. And you can too. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode. All right, get out of here. Have a great Thursday. Peace.